Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood. We're installing an underground drainage system for gutter downspouts. We want to grab up the water right at the downspout and get that water far away from the house. This homeowner has had a lot of problems with water around the house. It's been driving them nuts for years. We're going to come in and we're going to take care of that problem once and for all. We're taking the main line and running that discharge line far to the backyard. When you run a roof runoff system, you know, you tie several downspouts into a main trunk line. What happens is wherever you dump that water, it's going to be pretty wet. You don't want that to be in an area of egress and egress. You want it to be in the far back where it's not going to be an issue. And contractors always want to know, how much do you charge per linear foot for your roof runoff systems or for your French drain systems? Well, I'm going to answer that. So people always say, how much do you charge per foot to run pipe? You're going to go out of business in a hurry if that's how you charge. When you see trees, you got to charge for this. Look, these guys have been digging through roots and swinging an axe for quite some time. We could have put in, we could have put in four or five downspouts by now. You have to look at what you have to go through to get that downspout line in in this case but sometimes it's a french drain what do we got to go through to get the french drain in same thing applies as far as rules go there ain't no linear foot price that's for amateurs have fun with that all right so you see all that water coming off the roof we have roof water we have roof water it comes down in this valley and there's not very much gutter catching it, but you have to pay attention to that. So we know that this gutter is responsible for a lot of water. So this two by three, during hard rains, it could be running pretty much maxed out. We're gonna start out with the three inch plus, and then we're gonna go to a, a four inch main. All right, let's talk about these adapters. So these adapters, this was all we had. This is all there was for the longest time until we made our leaf filter. But I want to talk about these adapters. For one, there's no way I could, you know, fish a camera through here, send a jetter through here. There's no way that I can take a garden hose and just flush the system just for a peace of mind. Not to mention, to get it to the, you know, tight to the house, because you got to keep the downspout tight to the house or it looks unsightly. Look at this, how it has to step in. So... With it stepped in like that, water does spray out of these corners. So you can see the homeowner has been taping these up to try to keep the water from spraying out. Well, they sprayed out when they were brand new. I know they do that. And I can, you know, you can see clearly why. And then as the shingle gravel built up in these lines and plugged them, well, now you have even more water gushing out. So all these attempts are made to make these, these gutter adapters work. But the only gutter adapter that takes you from the downspout to the pipe that doesn't spray water out is the French Drain Man vented clean-out leaf filter. Now take a look at our vented clean-out leaf filter. It's the thing of beauty. You see how it's flat on the back side? The downspout is tight to the house. The water just falls and it's shaped like a funnel. Another four inch system getting tore out, going in the trash. When it's full solid with shingle gravel, you can't do nothing with it. All you can do is just rip it out and replace it. Plus it's box store pipe, so it's thin. Always hand dig around utilities and homeowners that are using trenchers. Just know that a trencher, there's no second chance. If you miss a utility or you miss a sprinkler line and you're off on your judgment, you're going right through it. That is the one big negative to using a trencher. That's why we use an excavator, but we also realize that an excavator comes with a learning curve and it's not that convenient for a homeowner just to go rent a mini excavator 
and have it show up at their house and the DIY a job. So trenchers are more practical to rent for homeowners. They are. If you've got an in-ground sp- uh, sprinkler system, it's going to be a problem. Definitely have your sprinkler company on the ready to come in behind that trencher. You guys are doing some aluminum work. Valente is going to crimp this so that that can go inside the next fitting because you want male to female, male to female as you put this together with the direction of flow. That way you don't have leaks. You can see how that tool crimps it. Now that'll go inside. That is fantastic. You know, we got dark brown, black, white, tan, you know, or beige. There was no room between the hedge and the house for a catch basin. And the four inch line, it wouldn't move the shingle gravel. It's too big of an area for a two by three downspout, even when it's maxed out. When the water hits a four inch diameter pipe, it's displaced over a greater area. When water loses its velocity and it slows down, you lose your PSI, your pounds per square inch that keep a line clean. So we're going to run a three inch line. We're going to move all that shingle gravel. So we're custom fitting this with some gutter work and some brick work, but that's what French Dream Man brings. These guys have a lot of talent. They're trades, so they can do some carpentry, some mason work, whatever it needs, some gutter work. All right, so the guys got that three inch pipe. They snuck it behind all those shrubs right here. When you Y that, you wanna go right into that four inch pipe right there. Now we have water from both lines. Now this four inch line is gonna stay clean because we have two downspouts on it. We're going after all these tree roots with everything we got. We have a copper sock. We have it in either 400 feet or 100 feet, depending on how you wanna purchase it. We use the 400 feet, of course, because the guys go out and they're using the stuff endlessly. We're putting this copper sock on the entire discharge line. We wanna go by that tree. Once this copper leaches into the subsoil, it'll push the roots away. Whether you drill holes in your catch basin or not, it doesn't matter. This catch basin is going to work flawlessly, even if it's holding water and it freezes in the winter. I've done videos on this. I've taken a camera through this catch basin frozen in the wintertime, showing how the top is ready for a thaw. But if you want to drill some holes in the bottom so that it slowly leaches away, you can. Just make sure if you drill some holes that you have some pea stone underneath your catch basin. And dig that hole out a little deeper for that catch basin so that you have room to put a couple inches of pea stone underneath it. You want to put some fabric down. And cut the fabric a little big so after you get the pea stone underneath the catch basin. And again, leave a couple inches. You want that catch basin to almost be levitating the pipe will hold it up and the pea stone will just roll under it you don't want to pick it up and put too much pea stone under it because now your line won't lay flat anymore when the pea stone is done rolling underneath the catch basin go ahead and keep pouring it along the sides of the catch basin add a little bit of extra along the sides that way if there's water in the catch basin it'll leach into the subsoil it'll end up leaching through all the voids of the small pea stone You'll come in contact with more of the subsurface soil that way. And if your goal is to leach all the water that's left behind after a rain that's sitting in this catch basin, you'll succeed at that. Just remember, this catch basin is shaped like the pipe on top, and it replaces the pipe. When you're on 1% slope, it will not be holding any water in the top of the catch basin, so it cannot freeze. Francisco's getting that nice and straight before he backfills it. Got the sediment trap. As soon as we get out of the landscape and we're in the lawn here, we had a nice place to put a sediment trap. We have a 70-foot discharge that goes all the way to the back. There's a drainage ditch. It's a community drainage ditch. It's a really big drainage ditch that everything is designed for the runoff to eventually end up in this community drainage ditch. So when we take this all the way to the back of the yard, we're not flooding out a neighbor. Now we're putting in another 3-inch plus line here. We got a 4-inch Y. We have a third downspout. Now, all three of these two-by-threes 
are running a lot of water. Always look up and see how much rooftop each gutter run is responsible for. And here's another pointer. Make sure you look up on your second story homes to see where those downspouts are being dumped because they never come all the way to the ground. Second stories come down to the first story gutter and it's dumped into the gutter trough on the first story. Notice how when we started this four inch trunk line, we had two three inch plus lines coming off two downspouts that are two by three. They were merged into a four inch Y that tied them into a four inch trunk line. We're going to keep that four inch line clean. We have two downspouts that really flow a lot of water. And down here, we're adding a third. You always want a sediment trap where your grade changes. There was a lot of slope down the side of this house. And then we get down here and it flattens out in the back. Well, that water is going to decelerate. And when it decelerates, it's going to want to drop any sediment. Hey, he's telling me what the, the Mexico, the temperature is. I'm like, oh, we could use that here. <laughs> Some of it. Nice. Right? Some of it. Yeah, we can use some of it. This entire four inch trunk line has a four inch sock on it. It's a copper sock. This copper sock is going to leach copper into the subsurface soil. It's going to push the roots away. Yeah, we can get it down before the wind blows it away. It's a pretty aggressive tree. The roots these guys had to go through, it was a lot. That copper sock is gonna take about a year to work. It has to leach into the subsoil. So this works immediately. This is copper sulfate crystals. Drainage contractors, you do not want to leave home without this. 39 years and I've never had a drain line fail. If you build them the right way and you build them to last, customers will get a lifetime of service out of them. Think about all the extra steps that we take to put in a really good drainage system that other contractors do not. Other contractors just buy cheap pipe at Home Depot and Lowe's. They buy that big box store pipe that's super thin, and it's recycled. So animals love to chew on it. It doesn't last. It doesn't stand the test of time. We buy the virgin materials, the extra heavy duty. This pipe is probably about five times thicker than the box store pipe. Animals do not like to chew on virgin pipe. All of our fittings are virgin, our catch basin our leaf filter, all made of high-density polyethylene, and it's not recycled. It's all virgin material. The virgin material is rated to last 200 to 500 years. So is our super stretchy, super sticky PVC tape. It's made just for this. The outdoors, it works when it's wet. It works when it's cold. It works when it's snowing. It works when it's raining. It doesn't matter. And the beauty of it all, it goes together quick, simple, easy, Here's some more of those extra steps that French Drain Man takes that other contractors don't. We do not tape on the pop-up emitter, but we overdig around the pop-up emitter. We put fabric down, and we want pea stone around it. That way, after the rain event, the little bit of water that's left in the pop-up emitter will leach into the subsurface soil. When winter comes, it will not freeze. It'll be waiting and ready. Once you wrap and contain all the pea stone in a non-woven geotextile filter fabric, you can then start packing the dirt on. You can start putting the dirt on and packing it in. Take your time and pack this really good because you don't want settling. And you don't want it to be hollow under your pop-up emitter cover. We never have to worry about the roots wrapping around this pipe and crushing it or growing under it and pushing it up because the copper sulfate and the copper sock will push the roots away. Now, always stand on your pipe and push the dirt on it. Pack it down every five feet before you just start pushing dirt in the trench because the dirt 
will get underneath the pipe and you'll lose that perfect slope that you work so hard for. This catch basin, that's a sediment trap for two downspouts. There's one riser to get it to grade. It's a slip-on riser that gives it two inches of lift. Really easy. No screws, no glue. Love that setup. Look how clean this is. The guys did a great job. Make sure your leaf filter is straight before you pack all the dirt around it. If you found any of this information helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. If you have any questions about this installation, just leave in the comments section. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.